All right, guys. Well, it's nice to connect with all of you. I, I'm Coach Reed Hall. Uh, I'm based right out of uh, Ontario, Canada. So I know you guys are a little bit on the other side of the world, but nice to connect with all of you and discuss. Uh, so kind of the purpose of this is I'm going to discuss some off-season training strategies and also some in-season training strategies. Now, the purpose of this is I want everyone to be able to leave this meeting with one or two things that you could potentially implement that will help you improve, okay? So I know a lot of you have had strength coaching in the past and you've probably done webinars and things like this before, but I want to make sure I'm giving some things that are not necessarily necessarily unique, but something different or something that you could add into your toolkit that you can actually apply into your training. So I'm going to talk about both off-season training strategies and in-season training strategies, but let's start with your off-season training, okay? Some parts I'm going to go over quickly here, and then other parts I'm going to go in more depth. And I'm also going to pull up and share my screen at times and show you guys some videos and different things that I'm referring to, okay? So when it comes to your off season training, some of you might not have a real off season. And what I mean by that is it seems like you just play all year round. So you don't have a big gap where you can really develop your physical capacity. So when I say off season training, what I mean by that is the time of the year where your volleyball is at its lightest. So if it seems like you're playing volleyball all year round, the time of the year where your volleyball is less hectic is when you can make your greatest physical improvements, right? So say there's like a two month period where you know your volleyball is less hectic and we treat that as your off season training. Well, you really wanna look, how can I make as much improvement over those two months as possible. Now, the first layer to this is when you enter your off season, you're probably coming off of a time where you've been playing a ton of volleyball, right? So your body has been beaten down, right? You've been doing a lot of hot, repetitive, high impact things over and over again, because that's what really volleyball is. It's a ton of jumping, a ton of arm swings, a ton of breaking down your body. So the first layer in your off season training is you want to make sure you're getting healthy. And what I mean by that is if you have a bunch of annoying knee related injuries, or, you know, you have a shoulder impingement or your lower back's bothering you. You want to deal with those things first. You want to get your body healthy first so that we can get on the path of making physical improvements. So that when you go back to volleyball, you can be jumping higher, be more powerful, hitting harder, et cetera. But the first layer is you need to get healthy, right? So if you've got long lasting reoccurring injuries and things that are bothering you, that's when you make sure you go see a physiotherapist or a physical therapist and start dealing with those injuries, right? But the big thing is you want to plan out those two months intelligently. What you really want to do initially is spend your time focusing on high value strength exercise. And what high value strength exercise are, are the exercise that produce the most strength results with the littlest risk of you getting hurt. So what I mean by that is there's just certain exercise that you can perform that will allow you to get stronger and you could screw it up and you're still going to improve. And what these exercises are, are generally a little bit simpler exercise. Like for instance, exercise like split squats or exercise where you're holding a fixed position or a one leg hip thrust. You want to get stronger through those exercises initially, and then start increasing the complexity of your exercise. Okay. So initially you want to focus on those high value exercise. What you don't want to do initially is immediately start moving into Olympic lifting, heavy back squats, where you're really overloading your body because your body has been dealing with this stress for so long. And because this is your off season, your body needs a break, but you can't take a break for too long because we need an off season where we also develop physically, right? So start initially with easier or more simpler exercise that you can load up and get stronger, but yet there's not much of a chance of you getting injured. Because now as you build strength, and you start increasing the complexity of our exercise. So say after two weeks, you start moving into things like front squats or back squats or trap bar deadlifts. Those are at this point now very good exercise that you can progressively build on week to week to week, right? But as you get stronger, that's where we can start adding in the other fun layers that I really want to talk about today. So I know all volleyball players, there's a few things that we want. At the end of your off season, you want to be jumping higher. You want to be feel like you're hitting harder. You want to feel like you get off the ground quicker when you jump. You want to feel mobile and quick. 
So these are the athletic attributes, but I know a lot of you probably go into an off season and you do a lot of strength work. And sometimes you're disappointed at the end of your off season because you don't feel like you're actually jumping higher or anything really transferred on the court. You may have gotten stronger, but you don't feel any faster. And the reason why this happens is you might not necessarily have focused on all the attributes that you need to have to really help you improve. And that's what I'm going to dig into now. Okay. So when you get into like I call like the meat and potatoes of your off season training, so kind of in the middle of it, you know, you've you've been training now for a while, you've been really getting after. There's certain attributes that you need to make sure you're training, and you don't want to skip any of these because some of these might be a limiting factor for you improving, right? So there's certain layers that are important. We know you getting stronger is important, right? You increasing your power output is important, right? Your power output is your ability to apply force really quickly. So if you were in like a static block position, your jump and you get up really high, that's showing a great deal of power, right? Another attribute that you probably don't know about as much is your reactive strength. Now, this is critically important. Your reactive strength is kind of like the speed at which you can get off the ground when you jump, right? So for instance, if you do your volleyball approach and you get off the ground really quick and high, that's showing a great deal of reactive strength. And this is what some of you miss, right? So say you've done a lot of strength work in your off-season training and you go back to volleyball, you're not jumping any higher. Maybe you didn't increase your power output or your reactive strength. And now I want to give you examples and videos on how you can work on these specific things, right? Because this works both for jumping higher, but also hitting harder, right? So if you want to jump higher, it comes from four, maybe five categories, right? There's getting stronger, right? There's getting technically better at jumping. There's improving your power output, which I mentioned, right? There's improving your reactive strength. And then there's also being healthy, right? Your ankles, knees, and hips need to be healthy and working well, okay? And this is the same thing for hitting harder, right? Same thing. You got to get stronger. You got to get technically better. You got to increase your power output, reactive strength, and make sure you're healthy. So there's different exercises that'll help improve your power output for your upper body. And there's different exercises that'll help improve your power output for your lower body. And what I'm going to do is share my screen here in a second, because I'm actually going to go through some of these exercises for you. So I'm going to group these into two things like power output exercise and reactive strength exercise. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, if you can see my screen, I just shared my screen. If you guys can see my screen, can someone give me a thumbs up? You got it. Okay. So let's start with increasing your power output. Okay. So now in your off season training at this point, you've gotten stronger, right? But you want to transfer this to something functional. So now we got to perform movements even faster. We got to perform faster movements. So say you were back squatting. Now we're going to go with a lighter weight. Maybe it's only 60 or 70% of your one rep max, but you're going to perform it fast and powerfully. Or say you're performing a trap bar deadlift. Maybe you're not going quite as heavy, but you're moving it quick. Right. And then there's also jump based exercise that help improve your power output, like dumbbell squat jumps or trap bar jumps. And that's what I want to show you a video of, because these are sometimes the missing exercise from your training. Another thing, obviously, that's good for increasing your power output is Olympic lifting. But the problem with Olympic lifting is it's not great for everyone. What I mean by that is some athletes have less mobility or are just not the best candidate to be performing these exercises. So I'm not going to focus on these today. All these exercises are great substitutes for Olympic lifts and may also perform more results. So a dumbbell squat jump is something like this. So this is going to be a great exercise for helping you develop your power output. So dumbbell squat jumps would be an example of a great exercise for developing your power output. Another really good exercise is trap bar jumps. And this is one of the best exercise for you to perform to actually increase. Oops, let me see if I can find it.
So this is an example of a trap bar deadlift jump here. And this is another really good one for develop your power. So once again, your power is like, if I'm in a static position, I can jump and my block touch is going to be very high, right? So that's a that's kind of your power output. I'm just going to take you over to an actual example here. Like a so you see with exercise like this, this would be even better if you elevated the bar a little bit off the ground, but you can see how you can develop power, right? And now I want to go to another area. So developing your power output is important because that's going to help improve your static block jump. But what's going to help you improve, you know, your swing block or your approach to jump is your reactive strength. And what reactive strength is literally the speed at which you can move from an eccentric to a concentric con contraction. You might not know what you, that means, but it's really the speed at which you get off the ground. So when you're developing, when you're approaching, you're developing all this momentum and you want to transfer that momentum to getting off the ground quick and high. So here are some exercises that would work well on this. So this is similar to a dumbbell squat jump, but this is called a dumbbell snap down jump, and it works more on your reactive strength. Sorry, I'm poor at typing here. So here's an example. For all of these type of exercise, you're going with lighter loads, but you're performing it with max intent and max speed. I'm going to show another, like, so that's one example, but there's all kinds of them. Another good example would be like doing repetitive hurdle jumps, right? Or let's talk about pogo jumps. This is another one you should, you could easily add it like the end of your warmups before you get going, but something that's working on the speed at which you get off the ground. It's actually working kind of on the elastic qualities of your muscles and tendons. So you don't have time to load your big muscle groups. And here's another great example. So that's just another example of one, something that'll build your reactive strength. I'm going to show you one more example, and then I want to move into some exercise that can help you hit harder or produce more power, right? So what I'm really going over are the things that you could be adding into your training when you get into the off-season training that you might be missing. That might be the reason why you don't feel more powerful or better at the end of your off-season, okay? So you probably have seen this one before. These are drop jumps, right? Um and this is once again, working on, you know, I got to land and I got to transition that energy to getting off the ground really quickly. So I know you guys have probably seen drop jumps before, but that's once again, another one that you can layer in there. And the best time to be performing these exercises are after your warm up and before you do your strength exercise. What you want to do is don't, you don't need a whole entire workout dedicated to speed and power and reactive strength exercise. What you want to do is choose like two or three exercise to add either after your warm up and before you do your strength work. Or you could do one of these exercise when you're resting from like a back squat or a front squat or a trap bar deadlift, that would be called contrast training. So for instance, if you did a set of like, say trap bar deadlifts, and then you did drop jumps 
Like, so you did trap bar deadlifts, rested, then you did your drop jumps, rest, and you do your trap bar. That's called contrast training. And what you'll find is if you do a li- an exercise, you're lifting heavier, and then you do a speed or power-based exercise, you feel a little more bouncier. You got a little more that you can put in. But now I want to switch gears. I want to talk about power output for your upper body. So the best hitting harder type of exercise is definitely throwing light med balls, light med balls. These are supposed to be light and you're supposed to perform with great technique and great force. So when you're off season training, initially in the off season training, making sure we're getting the shoulder strong, a rotator cuff is strong and everything is moving well. But when you get to this point, we need to improve your power output. So I'm going to show you a few different med ball exercise. I'll start with a, a half knee med ball rotational slam i got all kinds of ones here but i'll show you a uh, three or so right now So that would be uh, an example there. And then if you want to, you know, take it one more step further, you could go to your feet as well. Let me find this one here. So here's another good one. So for these exercises, you want to use like a six to 10 pound med ball. You guys work in kilograms over there. That's going to be tough math. Uh, That's like three kilograms to five kilograms type of med ball. So you don't want to go too heavy because although you can throw a heavier ball, you're not going to get the appropriate speed and mechanics with it. So here's another, a little bit more advanced one. Okay. So there's another example. So I actually want to back it up a little bit and go back to, so these are the things when you're in like the middle of your off season training, these are really important elements that you need to add in there. So you don't just feel like a strength athlete. What I mean by strength athlete is a lot of people when they're doing their off season training, they just feel like they're doing a lot of strength work, but not improving their athleticism. Right. Um, But when you start your off season training, I mentioned earlier that we want to start with simple exercise. You can get a lot stronger and then increase the complexity. I don't care if you're like the best best athlete in the world. That's how you always want to do it. It's the safest, best way to do it. Because when you finish your volleyball season, you're really beaten up. Like your body needs rest from the high impact. Um, another thing that's really important before you, you know, with these different jumping exercises I was showing you, or these different throwing exercise, we want to make sure we build up our deceleration patterns before we do too much of this, right? So what I mean by decelerating is when you change directions in the court, you got to move fast then stabilize and quickly change directions. Or, you know, you're approaching a hit a ball, you got to approach, land, stabilize that movement or quickly change directions. Or say you're attacking a ball and you're off balance, you got to be able to absorb that force through one leg at a time. So things that are really important is you need to develop your single leg strength early in your off season training. You need to do a lot of single leg strength work. And this is critically important because when you're playing volleyball, like when you jump, when you're doing your approach and you jump, like one leg, decelerates the movement more one leg produces more power when you land one leg is going to take more impact and force than the other so it's really important you build your single leg strength up so we kind of have a little more symmetry on our body but you want to also do what i call deceleration exercise early in your training and these are exercises that often look easy and then they're way too tough when you actually do you do them you're like oh that was really tough so i'm going to show you a good lower body deceleration exercise that you can put in after your warm-up I actually give this exercise to my athletes pretty regularly um even when they're in season just because it develops some really good patterns so check this one out here So that's a good example there of a deceleration exercise. You could also do uh, like lateral bounding variations. I'll toss one up here. 
but this is another good one. You want to learn how to decelerate from all different angles. Uh, you want to be doing deceleration exercise where you're landing on two feet or dece decelerating on two feet and also ones where you're decelerating on one foot and you also want multiple directions. So here's another example here. All right, so that, that's another deceleration exercise. So um, I, I hope these these type of things are trying to help you or at least gives you some more ideas on what to do in your off-season training. Now, I just wanna talk a little bit about in-season training. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here uh, in a second if I can figure out what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, so when it comes to in-season training, it's a lot different. When I say in-season training, this is when your volleyball schedule is busy, right? When your volleyball schedule is busy, you really wanna look at what do you do in volleyball and what are the things that you need? What I mean by that is when you're in your in-season, you don't need to do like really any additional like jumping in your training or not much additional jumping or not too much speed work. Like you can do some of it, but if you do that stuff, it needs to be the best and it needs to be done with maximum intent because you're already doing so much jumping and speed work in practice. Okay. So essentially when you're in off season, so say you're playing volleyball six days or sorry, when you're in season, say you're playing volleyball six days a week, you're doing six high volume, speed and power workouts, speed and plyometric type of workouts. That's what you're doing. That's what volleyball is. It's a high volume plyometric workout. But what are you not getting in practice? You're not getting the strength work, the movement quality and the injury prevention type of work. So that's what you need to spend most of your attention on. So when you're in season, you still want to be training at least two times a week, but focus on your strength work and focus on your injury preventative type of work. So focus on the areas that you're not doing as much in volleyball, right? So for strength work, what you wanna do is just not kill yourself with your exercise. And what I mean by that is you wanna build up and lift relatively heavy, but you wanna leave repetitions in the tank. And what I mean by that is when you're done your set, you feel like you could have done two more good repetitions, okay? And you don't wanna perform quite as many sets as you do in the off season because we don't wanna be sore the next day, right? You don't wanna be sore in season the off next day because you wanna be able to perform well when you're practicing and you're competing, right? So you can continue maintaining your strength and power or even get stronger without killing yourself. And that's what you really need to focus on. But when you're in season, you got to focus on also the weak points, right? Like your rotator cuff, your external rotators get really weak throughout season because we're doing that action where we're attacking all the time, right? So I need to make sure I'm building strength in my rotator cuff, my glutes, my hamstrings, making sure my calves and my ankles are always moving and functioning well and staying strong, right? So you really want to look at your entire year as well, right? There's obviously in season, there's off season, there's preseason, but when it comes to making an improvement throughout the year, you got to look at the times here where you can put your foot on the gas and when you have to put your foot on the brake, right? And when you put your foot on the brake, it doesn't mean that you stop training. It's just that the intensity has to be reduced in your training and you're more focused on maintaining and the times you were, you're putting your foot on the gas, that's when volleyball is lighter and you're trying to get those bigger physical improvements, right? So say you're going to make an improvement throughout the year. So say at the beginning of the year, your volleyball is lighter and you make an improvement, right? Volleyball then gets busy, right? It's busy for the next like five months. Well, you're just trying to focus on don't take steps backwards physically over those five months. Like you can improve a little bit because what happens if you're able to maintain and then you got another gap, maybe it's like six weeks. Well, then you can improve again, right? And then things get busy, you can maintain. But you can see over the year you improve. But what a lot of volleyball athletes do, and it's so many of you do this, is that volleyball gets light, you make a big physical improvement, volleyball gets busy, you lose it because you just stop. You just keep playing volleyball. Volleyball gets light again, you start improving, right? 
Volleyball gets busy. You don't do much. And this is what it looks like throughout the year. You actually don't improve throughout the year. So that's why you got to look like envision it in terms of more of like a long-term thing so that you can make those big improvements. Right. Um, I'm just going to leave this open for uh, a few minutes. I don't know how much total time I have, but uh, I want to open up any questions to you guys. So uh, you could ask any questions, some of the stuff I might know the answer to, but if I don't know the answer, I'll just tell you, I don't know, but uh, it really depends on what your question and what it relates to. But I want to give everyone or anyone an opportunity to ask a question. So you can either just turn on your mic and ask a question or drop a question in the chat box, whatever works better for you guys. But anything that you can kind of think about that could either pick my brain or something that's, you know, going to help you in any way. I'll give it like 30 seconds right now to see if anyone's got any questions they would like to answer a task. I got a question with what pro athletes have you worked with? I've worked with a ton. To be honest, I own a, a strength and conditioning facility where we train like hundreds of volleyball players there. A lot of our Canadian national team athletes train out of there. So with the videos I was showing you, those that, those videos are Sophie Bukovic. She won three NCAA championships at USC for beach volleyball. She won the U21 World Championships for beach volleyball as well. And, you know, she's on the path to, you know, be one of our future Olympic athletes. But there's been a lot of our top female athletes on our national team that I've worked with. I've also worked with uh, several of Ryan's athletes in the past. Um, so yeah, I, I've worked with a wide variety of them and from all different places in the world. And to be honest, volleyball players with a lot different backgrounds, like just because a volleyball player is a pro athlete doesn't mean they're, you know, at the highest stage in terms of their training. Right. So it's a variable, but uh, I don't know, some of the notable indoor volleyball players I've worked with, I've, you know, I've helped out Steven Marr a little bit. I work with Terrell Bromwell, which is probably one of the highest volleyball jumping athletes in the world. Um, there's a wide variety of them. I got a question here about how many times per week do you recommend weightlifting in off season? Uh, four times is generally the best number. And when I say four times, that doesn't mean they're all like high volume lifting days. So for instance, if I was going to break down a week for you in your off season, like normally I'd make like Monday, your toughest day. And what I mean by that, that might be your most lifting intensive day. Then Tuesday, you take like a recovery day. Wednesday, what I would recommend is warm up and then do some like speed and some jump work like a little bit and then have like a lower intensity strength session after Thursday, do another lower intensity strength session and do some conditioning afterwards. Friday, take off and recover. Um, Saturday, do your second toughest workout. So not quite as tough as Monday, but more of like another lifting intensive day. And then Sunday recover again. Generally that blend gives you a good flow where you get the appropriate balance of between getting your butt kick time and also being able to recover because you need the blend of the two. Um, but even if you were lifting three days a week, you can still improve a lot. Normally four is like the magic number. There's some studies that show this as well, that four days a week of lifting produces like really great results. And after Athletes that move to five days a week of lifting often don't receive any additional results. And some other athletes actually get worse results because they find that they're not able to properly recover throughout the week. So the intensity that they can put in suffers, right? With three days a week, normally there's a decline in the amount you improve from four days, but you can still make some great improvements. Two days a week, you can still improve, but it's a lot slower process. So normally like two days a week of training would be typical of someone in their in-season training where you can maintain and maybe make little improvements. Anyways, guys, I don't have too many minutes left uh, here. Ryan gave me the five minute mark uh, three minutes ago. So I think I got time to answer one more question. So I'll give you guys like 20 seconds if anyone wants to answer or sorry, ask one more question. And if not, then I'll kind of close this out and wrap it up. So I got a question. We are eight days into an event and some injuries and dead legs. How can we use our time to recover and perform? Yeah. So right now you guys are really busy. So you just got to make sure you're taking care of your body and now doing things like foam rolling and mobility exercises is good. And you should be doing that, but you need to make sure you're getting your muscle groups contracting. And that's probably what you're missing, right? So what happens when you're doing all this stress is your body's just, it's out of whack and unbalanced. But what you want to do is just simple, like 
ankle activation exercise, simple glute activation exercise, you know, doing some external rotation exercise. We want to get the muscles firing and the blood flowing because that will keep the joints functioning well and also help you recover. And then obviously the other recovery strategies, which, you know, are really important is just like making sure you're getting enough sleep, make sure you're fueling yourself through the day. Like you need to make sure you're eating a really good breakfast. That's like critically important. If you're someone that's going day after day, like breakfast is your most important meal because right when you wake up in the morning, that's when you're most dehydrated. You've had the least amount of fuel in your body. So you need a really good breakfast to set the tone for the day. And then you're looking to put fuel in your body every three to four hours. So making sure you have some really healthy snacks with you as well. Um, what is the best glute warm up? So I was asked, what are some good glute activation exercise before you go? So I'm going to share my screen again. I think this will be easier just to show you some videos, but I got some good ones here. Um, one second here. I'll, I'll give you two good ones here that you can steal. I do these before. Why can't I find this? Okay, here's a good. So I do these two before whenever I before I start playing, I need to get my glutes going. I have a hard time. It takes me a long time to warm up. But here's a really good one. So that's a really good one. I would normally do like 15 to 20 reps each side. Like your glutes will wake up really quickly with that one. Another good one that you could do, uh, and this is probably one a lot of you already do. Uh, you could do like a single leg glute bridge. So here's an example of this one. And there's ways you can obviously progress it and make it tougher as well. Yeah. So those are some good uh, glute exercise that you can perform as well. But I recommend like uh, every time when you guys are going to practice, make sure you get a long warm up. Make sure you're not just doing mobility and foam rolling, although you should be doing that. Make sure you're activating your muscles. So isometric exercise, like those, gl those glute exercises I was doing, shoulder work, those things are critically important because you need to make sure your muscles are firing well. And what happens is if you just foam roll and do dynamic stretching, it's going to take so long for enough blood flow to get to your joints. So it's going to feel raw and painful, especially if you're someone that gets a little, like if you're not warm enough and your shoulder bugs you, or you get cranky knees, you want to get more blood flow to those areas before and get those muscles contracting hard. Anyways, guys, it was, it was really nice helping all of you guys out here. And at least I hope you guys take something away, like one or two things. Like whenever you have zoom calls like this, it could be an overwhelming amount of information, but if you can take one thing or two things away, way that you can apply, then that's huge, right? That's leveling up, right? And if you can take whatever information you guys get from your coaches and just add a little thing to your toolkit here and there, you know, that goes a long way for the long run. So I think I got to get going now and I got to let you guys go, but good luck with the rest of the event and uh, stay healthy and keep working hard. Okay. I love all those silent claps over there with Maddie's group. <laughs> Oh, okay, I can't hear Sorry, those. Sorry, appreciate it. They were trying to get the mic, but it's tech difficulties. Thanks, Reader. Take care. Absolutely. I'll share all your info. Great.